Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This video is brought to you today with the help of Blackout Coffee Company. Blackout is a family owned roaster based in sunny Florida that supports channels like mine, the Second Amendment, and some of your favorite gun rights groups. In fact, every purchase of one of their partner roasts donates directly to that gun right group. So to get a cup of coffee, tea, or hot chocolate that you can be proud of and help support my channel in the process, go to blackoutcoffee.com slash Liberty Doll. I was shocked to read that this story happened here in South Carolina, but less shocked when I read it happened in Myrtle Beach. It turns out that a middle school in South Carolina has taken their zero tolerance policy and even extended it to see something, say something, because a little boy has now been expelled for not reporting another student with a gun, even when that student threatened to kill him and anyone else who saw the gun. And even though the gun was stashed in a see-through backpack. Even adults have trouble going to authority when they are under threat of death or bodily harm, but apparently the school expects higher of children. According to the Post and Courier, a 12 year old boy ID'd as John Doe in court records first learned that a fellow student had a gun back on February 6th. He said that he learned about the gun at breakfast sometime after 7 a.m. in the school cafeteria once it was already in the school. Allegedly, the other student was showing it off during breakfast. He said that he originally thought the gun was fake or a toy, but once he realized it was a real gun, the other boy threatened him and threatened every other student who witnessed this interaction. This was apparently complicated by the fact that John Doe didn't speak English and also thought that he would get in trouble with the school, which ultimately he did, so I, I guess he wasn't wrong. Now the gun didn't end up being an issue for long as breakfast starts at the school at 7 a.m. and a school resource officer learned about the gun before 8 a.m and confiscated it from the other boy. That boy was then detained in front of John Doe, which he said made him think even more that he would get in trouble for coming forward about the gun. Though by then, if the kid was already found out and the gun taken, it should have been a moot point. According to court documents, John Doe and several other students were then questioned by a school staff after the fact. He said that he never concealed anything from them, and apparently that's actually what got him in trouble. Once the school found out that he had known about the gun for a solid, like, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour, <laughs> they turned around and expelled him. That expulsion is now being appealed on the grounds that one, the kid was threatened, and two, the school can't even decide what rule he allegedly broke. Horry County schools have cited a state statute about school disturbances, accusing him of disturbing the school environment, which is a level three offense in the district student behavior code. But Doe's appeal noted that the act of disturbing schools is not defined in the handbook. The state statute that criminalizes school disturbances does not punish failing to act, and it only applies to non-students, according to the appeal. Other level three offenses include gang activity, bomb threats, detonating explosives, arson, bribery, vandalism, possessing stolen property, intimidation, larceny, drug offenses, fraud, gambling, possessing weapons or ammunition, and trespassing. None of those fit what happened with John Doe. If anything, he was the victim of intimidation and threats, but that's not being taken into account. He also wasn't accomplice and not the one in possession of the gun. And according to the student handbook, other punishments for these offenses could include out of school suspension, the withdrawal of privileges or being excluded from extracurricular activities, being assigned to an alternative school and restitution of property and damages. Expulsion was not the only option they could have given him. In no way does the punishment here fit the alleged crime. Despite not being able to define what John Doe did wrong or any evidence to prove he wasn't threatened into silence, a district appeal board upheld his expulsion after a hearing on April 17th. That decision was then confirmed by the Horry County Board of Education following a meeting on May 13th. The school maintains that Doe needs to face consequences for not acting to protect the school, despite the fact that he is a 12 year old boy and it's not his damn job. It's the school's job to protect their students, provide security, and have a gun-free campus if that's the kind of campus that they decide to have. If anything, this case is proof of the failures of school security and their duty to protect their students while on their property, not any proof of a 12-year-old kid 
failing to take up responsibility for an entire school. His job is to be a child. After all, let's remember the kid got the gun through school security in a see-through backpack. How did that even happen? How does that school resource officer still have his job? How does security still have their job? But this kid that saw it at breakfast and didn't tell anyone right away, by golly, he needs to be punished. If anyone besides the kid with the gun should be facing consequences, it should be the school. And I hope that the parents there have taken them to task on how the school plans to protect their kids in the future if parents insist on continuing to send their kids into public institutions. Reason number 546 why my child will be homeschooled. All right, folks, that is it on this little video. Please do all of the algorithm things. You know what they are. I don't have to tell you every time. And as always, thanks for tuning in and happy shooting.